That was a close one, but we did get it working. We saw in our last uh, video that we, we were able to get input from the user and we were able to output that input, meaning it worked. And so that's good. So now what we want to do is go get this information, how many words, how many characters, and how many of each letter was used. But you could maybe see that this is something we might want to use, not just for quotes, but for other things that we're doing to go be able to go see how many characters have been entered or to go see a letter count. This might be something that's useful, uh, not just for this program, but for other programs generally. And so one of the major tenets of object-oriented programming is to write programs in a way that it's super easy to pop out a piece from here and pop it in over there. And so in order to do that, we're going to go and create a second class that's just going to be some tools for us um, to use with any words that we're looking at. And so I'm going to come into this program and right click on OOP fun and I want to add and then what I want to add is a new class. All right, so then it's going to want the name of the class and maybe I'll just call it word tools. So this is going to be a series of tools that we can use with words. Word tools.cs. Okay, so I can create that and I should see it pop in here in my program. It should be at the same level as the program.cs file. And then inside this Word Tools class, I'm going to have in here a few different methods. So I'm going to create one method if we look at what we wanted to do. And I'm just going to move that over there because I like that better. This is the main class, and these are the classes if we had a series of them that we'd be using. We need one to count how many words there are. And so I'm going to go in and say, uh, this is a, a method that I'm going to need to call from the outside. So should it be public or private? Because I want the program to be able to see it and call it, then I want it to be public. And then what's it going to return in the end? So if it's a, the, the first one we're going to do is, a, so let's put void for now, is a word counter is what I'm thinking. So this is going to be a word counter method. And it's going to take as input whatever the quote is that was uh, put in. And so I'm going to put uh, name this the string, and I can call it um, the word, but actually it's a series of words, so I'll call it words. All right. So they're going to pass me in a series of words, and then I want to, from that series of words, tell them how many words it was, and so what type of information is it that I'll be returning? And this takes us back to our idea of data types. And so is it ever going to be a decimal number? No. Is it going to be a true or false? No. Is it going to be a character? No. It's going to be a number, but it's going to be a whole number. And so then I can look at my list and say, I know it's going to be a whole number. How many words do we think there might be in a quote? Is there going to be one that's over, uh, you know, 255? Probably not, right? But we could do something like a short and then we'd get 32,000. Are we going to get over 32,000 words? Probably not. But again, so, so we could do like a, we could do here a short or um, a U short and unsigned because it'll never be negative. And so as we're programming, we need to make these kinds of decisions. As it turns out, like I say, most of our programs are not using, you know, millions of objects and uh, most of them, um, we, we have a lot of storage and we have a lot of memory. And so in many cases, we just use an int. Now, an int is going to be way overkill on this one. We're not going to get 2 billion words in a quote, but it's only, um, whatever it was, it's only 32 bits out of all the bits in the memory. And so... If we're doing something that we're going to store a lot of these um, or anything like that, then yeah, we'll, we'll be careful. But a lot of times the main ones we're using, again, are booleans, chars, ints, doubles, and strings. That seems to be what we use most of the time, even though it's a little bit wasteful. 
All right, so we know we could do that, but we, we won't do that. We'll just leave it as an int, but we're going to return a number that tells the user how many words are in this um, quote or, or whatever it is that's being passed in, the sentence that's being passed in or paragraph. And so um, it says here, it doesn't like the fact that I've said it's gonna return an integer, but I'm not actually returning anything. So let's get to work on that. And so I need to somehow go in and, and create and figure out how many words are actually in this um, string of words that's being passed in. And as it turns out, there's probably multiple ways I can do this, but I'm just gonna go search and say, find out how many words are in a string. All right, so there's gonna be lots of different options here. Um, oh, in C sharp, let's, let's add that so we don't get Python results. Um, and, and we can go look it up. As it turns out, there's a method called split that takes and splits the word into, um, and here it talks a little, bit, a little bit about it. It uses the split method to create an array of words um, so there's a split method that's available to us as part of that string method. And so I can come in and look at, I have right now a string, which is a, a series of words. And if I want to split these up into individual words, I can say, I, I want to build a new string array called individual words. Let's do that. And it's even giving me the hint here. But this is going to take this array and just put each one into a box in, in this string array. And so I'm gonna set this equal to what was passed into me, which is this words variable. So words, and then there's a dot split function that splits those words out. And then what do I want to split it on is what goes in this, the parentheses. If I hover over this split method, it says, uh, in the parentheses, it wants to know what the separator is. It's a char that's the separator. And so I want to separate on what? How do I know when a new word starts and the last one ends? And typically we use a space. And so I will put in here a space and say, we're gonna split this um, based on spaces and that's gonna give us our, our um, string array, all right? And then once I've done that, it's gonna take all those words and split them out into this string array. I can go look and see now how many elements are in this array. And that is going to be a length function. So I can go look at the individual words and get the length. Sorry, I did that totally wrong individual words dot length is a method so it's going to go out and or sorry it's actually a property so it's going to go out to the individual words um, string array that we've created and it doesn't need parentheses because it's not a method it's a property of that array now it it's set to show us how long it is and then it, it gets this but then it's not liking, um, let's see, what's it not liking here? Individual words is not null here. And let's go ahead and finish this out and see if it likes it when we get done with it. So I can do a couple of different things here. One is I can return the number itself. This is okay, probably better to go create a variable int and call it the word count, set it equal to zero. And then instead of, we typically don't like to, and this is not everybody, this is me. <laughs> this is a lot of programmers out there that say, go and set the word count equal to this individual length. And then instead of returning that, return the word count. All right, we're gonna see in the next video if this works. Spencer, out.